I move that this bill be now read a second time. The object of this bill is to amend the Firearms Act 1996 to restrict the possession and use of lever-action shotguns in the same manner as currently applies in relation to pump-action shotguns. The bill will restrict access to the multiple round shotgun to only a very limited class of licensed firearms owners who have a category C or D licence. Under current laws, the eight round Adler A110 shotgun is classified as the least restricted weapon, the same as an air rifle or a BB gun, and is available to all 217,000 licensed firearm owners in New South Wales. This is simply unacceptable and it poses a real and present danger to community safety in this state. Firearms ownership in New South Wales is increasing, and there is absolutely no need to allow this weapon to be added to an already overstocked set of private arsenals around the state. The change proposed in this bill is entirely consistent with the objects of the existing Firearms Act, and particularly the first principle, and I read, 1A, to confirm that firearm possession and use is a privilege that is conditional on the overriding need to ensure public safety. The bill is also consistent with the objects of the Act, which include um, being to prohibit the possession and use of all automatic and so self-loading rifles and shotguns except in special circumstances. Mr President, many in the community have been quite rightly concerned since the first reports appeared of thousands of these weapons being on pre-order around Australia. Media reports, backed by statements from gun dealers themselves, make it clear that at least 7,000 of these guns are already on pre-order, and potentially many more. So we were pleased and surprised when Tony Abbott, Prime Minister Tony Abbott, intervened in July this year and indicated that imports of the weapon would be suspended as part of a firearms review which had been started in response to the Martin Place siege. Stopping the importation of this weapon is an obvious and necessary step to retain the integrity of our firearms laws. But despite this good start, Mr Abbott, as Premier after Premier in this parliament have done, then decided to cut a deal with the gun lobby. The federal parliament has no formal shooters party, but there was a deal to be struck with Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm. Senator Lionhelm is a gun nut. He uses his vote in the federal parliament to blackmail governments to deliver pro-gun laws. He's quite open about that. And rather than wait for months for the National Firearms Review to be completed and then make an informed decision about the importation and licensing of this dangerous weapon, Mr Abbott immediately caved into the gun lobby. Uh, Mr Abbott agreed to a 12-month limit on the Adler A110 import ban in exchange for Senator Lionhelm supporting a government bill reducing the legal rights of refugees. A truly offensive guns for intolerance deal. Senator Lionhelm is a pin-up boy for those who advocate American-style gun laws in this country. He famously argues that those who want sensible controls on gun laws have a mental illness. He wants almost no limits on gun ownership and believes that, in his words, once a person is safe to have a gun, it really doesn't matter what kind of gun they've got. If they're safe, it's safe. Senator Lionhelm might think that it's OK for people's neighbours to be armed with unlimited numbers of military assault rifles, pump action and lever action shotguns. However, the Greens and the overwhelming majority of Australians beg to differ. We place community safety and common sense ahead of this toxic belief in the US gun culture. But of course, Senator Lionhelm is not alone. He has strong support among many in the coalition and other crossbench federal senators such as Bob Catter. In fact, Catter's son-in-law is Australia's biggest gun importer, Robert Nao, who says that he has plans to import 20,000 of the A110 weapons every year, having already sold 7,000 to local gun dealers uh, across the country. Pre-sold 7,000 to local gun dealers across the country. Guns, money and politics. That is a potent and damaging mix wherever they come together. The gun lobby, the gun lobby itself <coughs> describes the Adler A110 as, in their words, a game changer. What is the Adler A110? It's an $800 shotgun advertised as fast and furious, 
with a smooth cycling action five-shot tube magazine and a soft ventilated recoil pad. Videos online show just how fast this gun can be reloaded and fired, with eight shots in under eight seconds. Gun dealers are out there celebrating the speed, the lethality and the novelty of this weapon. That's how they've got the thousands of pre-orders. For sure, lever-action guns have been around from the time of the Wild West. They killed people then. This updated version can kill even more people now. And that's the point. What's the actual difference between a lever-action shotgun like this and a pump-action shotgun? There is a need with both to reset the gun between, between trigger squeezes. And in both cases, this reset takes a fraction of a second, maybe marginally faster with a pump-action shotgun. Both contain multiple rounds that can be let off in quick succession. Neither has any place in the hands of the general public or even the day-to-day -day recreational shooters. Gun Control Australia says, rapid, rif rapid fire rifles turn up in mass shootings, and that's why they were basically banned here after Port Arthur. They also say, we would like to see a complete ban unless it is subject to the same restrictions as a Category C firearm. At the Gun Control Australia lunch this week, former Prime Minister John Howard had the following comments <coughs> about the gun. If the government ends up letting this in and not treating it, as I think it should be on the evidence available to me at the moment, treat it as akin to an automatic or semi-automatic, then I would be very critical of that. Certainly. And that would be a huge mistake. He also said, I don't think a great majority of Australians want to see a weakening of gun laws. They think it's something we got right, and I think we should keep it that way. I don't often quote John Howard, at least in support of an argument. Sure in this case, he line. got it right. <laughs> he took the brave political decision in 1996 to deliver our current tough gun laws. He took political damage for that. And he continues to make the case for community safety over day-to-day -day politics. What about liberating East Timor? This is a simple piece of legislation, which simply seeks to ensure that the Adler A110 and any other lever-action shotguns are classified as prohibited weapons for which a Category C or D licence is required. There's no material difference between a multi-round lever-action shotgun and a pump-action shotgun. They can reload almost as fast and they are every bit as deadly. They should be subject to similar controls and licensing restrictions. They should not be subject to the same controls as an air rifle or a BB gun. As a result of, the propo of this proposed bill, only a restricted class of licensed shooters, such as primary producers, professional contract shooters engaged in vertebrate pest control on rural land, certain limited classes of clay pigeon shooters, will be authorised to possess or use a lever action shotgun. This change is consistent with the objects of the Act. The National Firearms Agreement itself, which specifies that licence category C, prohibited except for occupational purposes, includes pump-action shotguns with a magazine capacity no greater than five rounds, and licence category D to be prohibited except for official purposes and includes self-loading shotguns with either an integral or detachable magazine and pump-action shotguns with a capacity of more than five rounds. The Adler A110 can fire eight shots in under eight seconds, easily qualifying it as the kind of rapid-fire weapon the National Firearms Agreement was put in place to control after the Port Arthur Massacre. Since we put those laws in, following the Port Arthur Massacre, we are fortunate in this country to be able to say we have not seen a repeat mass murder of that kind. Other nations look to our country for guidance for national firearms laws that keep our communities safe. As politicians, we have an ongoing obligation to maintain the integrity of those laws, to continue to take, where necessary, brave political steps to stare down the gun lobby in the overriding interests of community safety. But when Labor was in government in New South Wales, they repeatedly ignored that overriding obligation. And they did deal after deal with the shooters to water down our firearms laws. One of the most notorious being the current Section 6B of the Firearms Act, which has been abused in tragic circumstances and lead, led to an appalling death. Since coming to power in 2011, the Coalition has shown itself just as willing to trade off community safety for narrow political gain. With, with one of its, 
with its notorious deal to allow hunting in national parks. With two shooters MPs holding a partial balance of power in this House and many pro-grun MPs in his coalition ranks, no doubt Premier Baird would rather this bill was not on the books. However, community safety demands that this bill be supported. This bill can pass next week with the combined vote of the Government and the Greens. This bill is a chance for Premier Baird and the Labor opposition to take a turn away from their past deals with shooters and put community safety ahead of gun politics. Mr President, I commend the bill to the House. Uh, Mr President. <coughs> the Government Whip. Mr President, I move that debate on this bill be adjourned for five calendar days. Yes. The question is that debate on the bill be adjourned for five calendar days. All those of that opinion say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The clerk will read the order of the day.